Welcome to the second lecture in Applied Math. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include classification of magmas and an introduction to group theory. Now the ability to classify mathematical objects is not trivial and is not without practical value. For example, the ability to classify a differential equation as a first order linear and ordinary equation is an immediate aid in solving it since a general and exact solution exists for all such differential equations. On the other hand, for some classes of differential equations, even when a general solution exists, it is not exact and can only be approximated by numerical methods. Similarly, the ability to classify algebraic structures will allow us to determine which properties hold and whether or not equations with coefficients and indeterminates in those structures have a solution. As we will see, a group has precisely the properties necessary to guarantee the existence of a solution for all linear equations with coefficients and indeterminates in the group. Okay, so we'll start with the exercises from the previous lecture, and the first two we will prove as a lemma. So let a sub 1 and a sub 2 be any arbitrary sets. Then, a sub 1 is a subset of the union of a sub 1 with a sub 2, and the intersection of a sub 1 with a sub 2 is a subset of a sub 1. Now, these uh, sets are any arbitrary sets, so what we are actually proving is that any set is a subset of any union which contains it, and any intersection is a subset of any of the uh, sets in the intersection. So proof. First statement. Let x be any arbitrary element in the set a sub 1. Then since the union of a sub 1 with a sub 2 is the set of all elements such that that element is either in the set a sub 1 or the set a sub 2. It is true that given an element in the set a sub 1, that element is in this set. And so the element is in the union of a sub 1 with a sub 2. That is, for every element that is in the set a sub 1, that element is also in the union of a sub 1 with a sub 2, and hence a sub 1 is a subset of the union of a sub 1 with a sub 2. So second statement, let x be any arbitrary element in the intersection of a sub 1 with a sub 2, then that element is simultaneously in the set a sub 1 and in the set a sub 2 in particular that element is in the set a sub 1 that is for every element in the intersection of a sub 1 with a sub 2 that element is in the set a sub 1 and hence the intersection of a sub 1 with a sub 2 is a subset of a sub 1. Now these are rather trivial to prove and require nothing more than the knowledge of the definition uh, of the given sets and the definition of subsets, but I want to cultivate the practice of taking nothing for granted. Even the uh, facts that seem intuitively obvious need to be verified. Mankind simply does not have a good track record for uh, arriving at the correct conclusions based on intuition alone. So notice that for any arbitrary sets A and B, the intersection of A and B is a subset of the set A, which is a subset of the union 
of A and B, and the intersection of A and B is also a subset of the set B, which is a subset of the union of A and B. And this is true because of the lemma we just proved, and also because uh, subsets satisfy the transitive property as we proved in the previous lecture. So now we'll look at the third exercise from the previous lecture. Let phi be a function with a domain, the Cartesian product of the positive integers with itself, and let this function be defined by phi of the ordered pair AB is the difference A minus B. So let A and B be any two arbitrary positive integers. Then exactly one of the following is true. A is less than B, A is equal to B, or A is greater than B. Now if A is less than B, then A minus B is less than zero. And so for this range, the function produces an element that is in the set of negative integers. And in fact, for every negative integer, there exist positive integers A and B such that the negative integer C can be written as the difference A minus B where A is less than B. In other words, uh, the entire set of negative integers is part of the range of this function. Now if A is equal to B, then A minus B is zero, and so the function produces an element that is in the singleton containing the number zero. And if A is greater than B, then A minus B is greater than zero. And so for this range, the function produces an element which is in the set of positive integers. And in fact, for every positive integer, C, there exists elements A and B in the set of positive integers such that positive integer can be written as the difference of A and B where A is greater than B. And so the entire set of positive integers is part of the range of this function. And so the range of the function phi is the union of the negative integers together with the singleton containing zero and the set of positive integers this union is the entire set of integers, and hence the function, which is a map from the Cartesian product of the positive integers with itself into the entire set of integers, is not a binary operation. On the set of positive integers, and thus the positive integers is not a magma under subtraction. Now on the other hand, if phi is a map from the uh, set of uh, ordered pairs of integers 
back into the set of integers. And if this function is defined by phi of the ordered pair AB is the difference A minus B. Then for every two integers A and B, the difference is, once again, an integer. And so the entire set of integers under subtraction is a magma. So as an exercise, show that the set of integers is not a magma under division. OK, so new definition. A binary operation, which we'll denote with the symbol star on a set A, is associative if and only if for every three elements A, B, and C in the set A. A star of the quantity, B star C, is equal to the quantity, A star B star C. Now, since a binary operation on a given set is a function mapping ordered pairs of that set back into the set. This binary operation is associative if and only if phi of the ordered pair A phi of BC is equal to phi of the ordered pair phi of AB and C. Okay, so new definition. A semigroup is a magma for which the binary operation is associative. So as a counter example, we will show that the magma consisting of the integers under subtraction is not a semigroup. So proof. Notice that 1 minus the quantity, 2 minus 3, is 1 minus the negative of 1, which is negative 2, while the quantity 1 minus 2 minus 3 is negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. And so it is not true.
that for every three integers, a, b, and c, that a minus the quantity, b minus c, is equal to the quantity a minus b minus c. So as an example of a semigroup, the integers under addition is a semigroup. Proof. Let A, B, and C be any three integers. Then A plus the quantity B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. That is, we arrive at the same uh, sum, whether or not the parentheses are there. And the quantity A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. Once again, we arrive at the same sum, whether or not the parentheses are there. And so for every three integers, A, B, and C, it is true that A plus the quantity B plus C is the same as the quantity A plus B plus C. And hence, the set of integers under addition is a semigroup. So notice that in a semigroup, we can regroup the terms any way we like. As long as we do not change the order. of the terms. So we'll look at one more example. The integers under multiplication is a semigroup. So proof. Let a and b be any two integers then the product a times b is once again an integer. And so the integers under multiplication is a magma. Now let a, b, and c be any three integers. Then a times the quantity b times c is the same as a times b times c. That is, uh, we arrive at the same product, whether or not the parentheses are there. And the quantity a times b times c is the same as a times b times c. Once again, we arrive at the same product, whether or not the parentheses are there. And so for every three elements, a, b, and c, in the set of integers, it is true that a times the quantity b times c is the same as the quantity a times b times c. And hence the integers under multiplication is a semigroup.